Esther and me have been harvesting vegetables and we have plenty to share with the neighbors. Meanwhile, Hannah is having her first lesson at mowing the lawn and Carson has been a great teacher and I'm just so proud of them both. So, if you are living in the country, well, regardless of whether you are living in the country or not, but especially living in the country, I'm trying to give um, some encouragement and help, especially for single mothers living in the country. You have to get your children involved. You are going to be incredibly busy and you need to be able to let them take the load off of you as much as possible. It is absolutely critical, not only for your survival in the country, but for their own good, progressing onto youth and into adult life. and help especially for single mothers living in the country you have to get your children involved you are going to be incredibly busy and you need to be able to let them take the load off of you as much as possible it is absolutely critical not only for your survival in the country but for their own good progressing onto youth and into adult life it is a blessing for them to learn to work hard and yes you might feel bad that they don't have as much free time as other children and they do have to work harder and life may be harder in a way but it's going to benefit them for the rest of their lives so don't be discouraged keep working together every day there will be challenges and difficulties wherever you look I have a lot of mess to clean up constantly and little kids spill juice and water but there is so much joy and we just have to focus on those um, situations I think so Esther and me have been harvesting vegetables and we have plenty to share with the neighbors meanwhile Hannah is having her first lesson at mowing the lawn and Carson has been a great teacher and I'm just so proud of them both. So, if you are living in the country, well, regardless of whether you are living in the country or not, but especially living in the country, I'm trying to give um, some encouragement and help, especially for single mothers living in the country. You have to get your children involved. You are going to be incredibly busy and you need to be able to let them take the load off of you as much as possible. It is absolutely critical, not only for your survival in the country, but for their own good, progressing onto youth 
and into adult life. Sometimes we get so bogged down in all the work and we see um, the challenges that our children have um, and the things that are not going well, but sometimes we see how well they are doing and we see our work is paying off and these situations will happen unexpectedly. So um, don't get stuck in the moment in one way. In another way, stay in the moment. Don't worry about the future or stress about the past. So stay in the moment in that respect, but don't get so bogged down seeing all the problems because I think if you look five years down the road, you're going to see that actually they're doing pretty well. And those difficulties and trials that you have faced together and that have been so difficult and maybe you've been so tired and just exhausted and you know that the work is never done and your children are having to work um, hard, harder than you would like them to. It's really for their own good and you're able to do it, all of you together. So keep pressing on. Keep on working and you will be rewarded. One important thing when you are living um, as a single mother in the country is you should not procrastinate. I know that we're going to procrastinate um, somewhat anyway, but try not to. When something happens, you need to get on it right away because if you don't, it all piles up. Um, even if you miss a couple days, the next day um, after that, you're gonna have so much more work to do. So try to stay on top of things. And even then, you could be a lot more busy than you want to be. But if you stay on top of things, things will be more manageable. That is absolutely essential. When you're harvesting green beans, you want to make sure that you lift up the little bushes and look underneath because there are treasures underneath those plants. If you just look on the surface, you're not gonna get them. Some I'm seeing as I'm looking underneath the plant and you just kind of twist a little bit, pull a little bit, and we're going to marinate these in olive oil, salt, and fresh garlic. Um, they're going to be absolutely delicious, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, we need to do that day before, ideally, so that we get the flavors of the um, fresh garlic marinated in really Another nice. really nice kind of green bean to plant is asparagus beans. They um, grow on, um, a vine so you'll need to like put them on poles or on the edge of a fence or something and um, they grow really long they are um, they grow about a foot long and they're really skinny and they're really really good um, they're kind of nice they're time saving because you've got this one really long bean and you only have to take the top off um, and the tail if you want to um, so um, the thing about these is that one year I didn't pick them in time and some of them were really stringy and you get these really long strings if you cook those it's going to really turn the kids off so we got kind of turned off of those um, but no doubt we'll grow them another th another year this year we are growing um, the bush beans and they're really good and tender and absolutely delicious well, i have four rows of these bush beans and most of them are not ready um, some of them when i planted them had um, been eaten by the rabbits so I replanted some um, so these about three or four plants are ready and I got a little for lunch and I also have a small amount in here so it's important to keep up with that later on we're going to be able to get so let's think more. of some of the object lessons in the garden right now um, I just found this um, little branch that came off of a pepper plant and in and of itself it's going to die and these lessons that we find in the garden are really so obvious but it's really good to think about them because we need to be reminded day by day how we need to stay connected to Jesus we need to stay connected to the vine because otherwise we're going to be like this plant we're going to shrivel up we're going to have no power and we are just going to um, our fruits are going to die and we're going to become nothing without being connected to the vine, connected to Jesus. So this pepper plant was providing the nourishment for this little pepper right here. And there is some more growing up at the top. And without that nourishment, they are going to die. Another thing I was thinking about today is 
when I was weeding. As I mentioned before, when you have this type of garden, there is not much weeding to do. You just have to get the weeds from these little holes. Um, so I did that and um, I weeded these holes and it doesn't take long at all. Um, it's very easy to do, very quick, and I've got most of them. I still see one coming up. So I was thinking how underneath this plastic, really there is nothing growing. In places like this, you can see the weeds coming up. And I was thinking the reason why they're coming up here is obviously because they have light. Have light we can grow and the light is Jesus and we can only grow if we have the light now of course weeds are not usually um, equated with us and anything good but in this situation anything any living thing can only grow if it has the light and just so we can only grow if we have the light of Jesus in our lives and how do we get that light Esther where do we get the light like you said and listening to the sermons on Sabbath and at other times and that's how we get the light right Joshua yeah we have to listen to what Jesus says to us Give me when I can't read then someone then I read someone to to read it for me that's right when you can't read someone else will read it for you and that's how you learn about Jesus and find the light to help you to grow. You found some banana peppers, didn't you? Yeah, I Very found good. Put them in I the bowl. Okay. Can you put them in the bowl of green beans? Over here, sweetie. Oh. Right over here. Banana. You want to bite Very the good. banana? Rain clouds are coming. So early it looked like it was going to rain and I prayed that it would hold off a little longer because I had stuff to do. But everything is harvested that I wanted to harvest. a little longer because Karsten has a lot of mowing to do and a lot of weed eating to do but see Mom. yes Esther's cat is going for a walk on the leash where's that Hannah's cat there she is <laughs> also don't be afraid to let your children do things that um, are a little bit risky this is not that risky, but if he drops this ball, those green beans are going to be scattered and we're going to have to pick that up. But that's all part of it, isn't it, Joshua? Hannah is cleaning off the mower. It's very important to keep our tools clean so they will last for as long as possible. And Hannah, you did a great job mowing. Thank you so much. It's harder than it looks. Harder than it looks. Would you like to do that for your job? Keep track of Heidi's pen. Work gloves. Work gloves for you. Okay, we'll make sure to pick that up. Here is our second harvest of the day. Obviously, I can't possibly use all of that. Um, so, I'm going to be seeing which neighbors want some and using some for ourselves. Fortunately, some of my kids are going to really enjoy this. Carsten loves the squash and onions, they are so good. And I have some onions that I'm going to pick from the garden, even though they're a little small, but not today. They really need water, so I'm glad the rain is coming. Hannah has cut the grass in Heidi's pen. It's Heidi's pen right now because she has the litter of puppies. And what a beautiful job you did. Thank you so much, Hannah. So, did you enjoy it? Yes, it was a good experience, except my hands or shaking in my back like... Yeah, yeah, right. It's something that you have to get used to doing. Yeah. Yeah. But you will. You'll get more and more used to it. Oh, 
Yeah. Very good. Treasure, put the kitty down. Oh, yeah, kitty down. Yep, yep. And actually, I'm just going to let go. Oh, yeah. What is your kitty's name? Uh, I think it's, I think it's Fluffers and Sandy. Fluffers? It's Fluffers and Sandy. Fluffers and Sandy? Yours is Aww, Sandy, Sandy. And yours is Fluffers. Really? Yeah. So Esther's is now Sandy. And yours is now Fluffers. Yeah. She's chasing her tail. She has something on her tail, like maybe a little sticker or something. I judge your nose. There is always something that even the smallest child can do. There's something that they can help with. Wash things out, wash some simple dishes, pick in the garden, help fold laundry, put laundry away. There's always something that they can do. And it's so beneficial for them to feel part of the team because they are, they are a big part of the family. I have gotten to the point where my older children can do some things that I can't do. And that's, that's all good. Um, they weed eat and I don't know how to weed eat. Um, I'm sure I could learn, but as busy as I am, they take over that. They take over the mowing and the weed eating. It's been Rebecca and Karsten, but as you have seen, Hannah has learned to mow with the push mower and it went well, um, very well. And she, she, as she does it more and more, it will go even better. So um, make sure that all your children are involved and as they grow, they'll be able to do more and more. There will be occasions many times where they don't know what to do and maybe there's nobody to ask but you will find that people do really want to help there are neighbors that are happy for you or your child to call and ask how to do something but let them try first on their own um karsten just put on a a new blade on the lawnmower and there was another piece that had broken and he had to put that on too and i told him that our neighbor would be able to help if needed but he did it on his own and um, I don't think he ran into any challenges. Sometimes there are big challenges and sometimes they do just figure it out on their own. So that really does a lot for their sense of, of accomplishment and it's just really good for their character and encourages them and encourages the whole family really. I have washed the green beans really well and I've pretty much cut them up kind of loosely. You don't have to do that and you can leave them whole if you like. I've put a little water in and I've got the top on. I'm going to steam this pan of green beans for um, not too long, just so they're just a little bit tender. And then I'm going to add some olive oil and crushed garlic and salt after I've taken out any excess water. Okay, I have steamed the green beans and I have drained the water out and now I'm going to add, I've turned off the heat, I'm going to add a little olive oil and I'm going to add a little salt. Again, I'm using the sea salt. We can always add more. Okay, Esther is mixing the green beans, they don't need much mixing, just a little bit and then I'm going to use this garlic crusher which my son Karsten gave me. Uh, quite a long time ago, and I'm going to crush the garlic. Mm -hmm. oh, I think you'll need a little help. Go ahead and try to squeeze it together. Push really hard. Hannah has, is having a turn. Push real hard, Hannah. There we go, it's all crushed. There we go. Okay, get those little pieces. Crushing it. Push real hard. Do you need some help? No, I'm not. So I'm almost on it. Okay. She's building those muscles. Okay, so you can see I have quite a lot of fresh crushed garlic in there. And we're just going to marinate it overnight and tomorrow we will reheat it and it will be just delicious. 